Hi, I'm Ellen Munchauer. And I'm Tyler Casey. Welcome back to Johnny Benny Campus News. We'll start off today's episode by going straight to Nicole Schultz with headline news. Hi, my name is Nicole Schultz and welcome back to JBCN's segment called Headline News, bringing you the top news stories from this week to help you keep up to date during your busy school week. First, a speech by conservative editor Milo Yiannopoulos at the University of California, Berkeley was canceled last week after demonstrators set fires and threw objects such as fireworks at buildings to protest his appearance. All buildings on campus were locked down for several hours, and the university police said on Twitter that students should leave the area because of the violent demonstration. Mr. Yiannopoulos, an editor at Breebart News, is known for his attacks on political correctness that can sometimes turn offensive. In a statement, campus administrators condemned the violence and said it will now overshadow the efforts to engage in legitimate and lawful protests against the performers' presence and perspectives. Second, a jury found a man guilty of all counts in connection with the shooting of five men protesting the death of a black man by Minneapolis police. 24-year-old Alan Scarcella argued he was acting in self-defense when he shot at a group of Black Lives Matter protesters outside the 4th Precinct Station in November of 2015. All five people were shot, survived, and witnesses claim they were simply trying to escort Scarcella and his friends away from the protest site when Scarcella pulled out a handgun and opened fire. And last, red and blue states are at odds over Trump's sanctuary city order. California is pushing for a statewide sanctuary that would prohibit law enforcement from cooperating with federal immigration authorities, while the fellow U.S.-Mexican border state, Texas, is seeking to withhold funding from cities with the policies. Join us next week for the headline news to keep you up to date with your top news stories. This was Nicole Schultz reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Thanks, Nicole. Back on campus this week, Student Activities and Leadership Development Office will be holding the Club Expo on Tuesday, February 7th from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Gretzky Conference Center. This event will resemble the involvement fair, but will also offer clubs the chance to present their activities. This event is meant to engage students to get involved on campus and to help new clubs gain members. This Wednesday, the first round notifications will go out to all students who applied for the CSB SJU 2017-2018 Semester Study Abroad programs. The Nutrition Club will be sponsoring a Cooking 101 seminar on Thursday, February 9th from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in Gretzky. Coburn's dietitian Ashley Kabutha and Gretzky head chef Phil Paulson will be presenting on college-friendly shopping and cooking strategies to improve food competence and confidence. All are welcome to attend. JEC has two events this weekend. On Friday, they will be hosting Grocery Bingo. Play the classic game of bingo. Winners will walk away with groceries and snacks. This event will be going on in Brother Willie's Pub from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. On Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m., JEC is having a cupcake make and take in Goretzky Fireside. Students make and decorate their cupcakes. At another station, there will be a crafts for students to decorate a cupcake box to put their cupcakes in so it can be given as a gift or saved for later. To finish off this week's episode, we go now to Zach Eichten and Maddie Morris with this week's political segment. We're doing an interview today with Maddie Morris who had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. for President Trump's inauguration. Maddie, welcome. Thanks, Zach. Thanks for having me. So, Maddie, you mm -hmm. went to the uh, President Trump inauguration. How did you find yourself mm -hmm. going to that? Well, funny story, um, a few months ago, I put my name just in the hat for tickets for my congressman. Um, every congressman, woman, and senator um, has tickets available for their constituents, and I just decided, why not? Either way, it'll be a historic election, so I put my name in the hat, and um, right before finals week, I got a call from a staff assistant saying that I got the tickets, and I just decided, why not? So uh, my mom and I bought tickets and booked our hotel, and I decided to bring along a camera. So for all the viewers out there who maybe don't know the history of the inauguration, mm -hmm. you mind just giving a brief recap of what it is? Yeah, so this was um, the 58th inauguration that we've had, actually, um, but President Trump is our 45th president. Um, so the inauguration is basically a weekend of events to celebrate either a new administration or a continuation of an administration. So uh, can you describe sort of like what was the atmosphere? What were, what were the people thinking, uh, excited about? 
Mm -hmm. So um, the ceremony itself was pretty, pretty energizing. Um, there was a lot of music at the beginning. Um, a few different groups were there to, yeah, to perform music. Um, there were a few speeches um, by people in the House and the Senate and some of the leadership committee, um, as well as you know, eventually the swearing in and then um, the president's inaugural address. Um, there was a lot of, there was some jeering from the crowd, some booing at different times, but also a lot of positive feedback, especially during um, President Trump's address itself. Um, everyone at the end chanting together, you know, make America great again. Um, so yeah, there was definitely parts of the speech that was very energizing for the crowd. What was the atmosphere like of like the city, in the, mm -hmm. within the city? So the city itself um, was pretty busy 24-7 um, uh, that we were there. Lots of school groups um, were there, I imagine, you know, for the inauguration itself maybe, um, or for the parade the next day. There were a lot of bands um, and whatnot in the parade. So there were lines everywhere to get into the Smithsonian's and see the monuments. A um, lot of people. Uh, yeah, it was just a really busy, hectic time in the city, um, but really invigorating to be there. What, in your opinion, was the most impressive part of the inauguration or the day? Uh, your thoughts? Mm -hmm. um, I guess I, I was very impressed um, just with how um, safe DC was in general. I think there was a lot of speculation about, you know, would there be really violent protests and would there have to be heavy, like, um, police force presence? But I, I never really felt unsafe. Um, it was a yeah, it was an interesting time to be in the city. Um, there was a lot of people, um, so I was really impressed by how well security handled all of that. Um, another thing that was kind of random, I wasn't expecting, but in the Smithsonian of American History, um, there's a gallery on the top floor, um, the President's Gallery, and they had already updated everything to reflect the new president. Um, the Obama family was uh, referred to in past tense, even though the inauguration hadn't happened yet and um, Trump was added to the wall as our current president. So I wasn't really expecting that. So it was uh, interesting that they were so on top of it. So compared to inaugurations in the past, um, what are some similarities or differences between mm -hmm. the two? Um, well, I think a similarity for any inauguration is just that the supporters that are there are just so energized and so excited to see you know, their candidate, their new president. Um, I think one difference is that this inauguration and just the election itself saw more negativity. So there was um, a somewhat of a negative tone at times as well. Um, so I, I wasn't at um, either of the Obama inaugurations, so I'm not really sure what that felt like to be there. But I can definitely say that um, there was probably a little bit more negative undertone um, to you know, whether it was protests in the city or um, other things going on that weekend. All right. For Johnny Bunny Campus News, uh, I've been Zach Eichten interviewing Maddie Morris. Back to you, Tyler and Ellen. Thanks, Zach and Maddie. That wraps up this week's episode. I'm Tyler Casey. And I'm Ellen Munchauer. Reporting for Johnny Bunny Campus News. Enjoy the rest of your week and make sure to tune in next time.